Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Uh, what we have here is two samples uh, from the same sample that I took from Malcolm Bendel's thunderstorm generator in the UK, the one that's attached to the multi hundred kilowatt natural gas that is methane powered grid tied electrical generator. And we're going to have a look to see whether these are anything more than iron oxide and what their morphology is. Okay, so uh, we want to set this up. Okay, um, that should be okay. Close. So we'll have a quick sample of that. And okay. Now I'll put this to the SEM. Probably uh, we'll put our sample over here. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff here. Definitely looks a bit like iron oxide to me. <laughs> so. Fortunately, the beam is baking the, <laughs> the sample and it moves a little bit. So we'll have to change the energy down a bit. And hopefully they won't move around so much. What indeed am I looking at here? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, let's go and take some rough images here. So um, I'll take this one. And I'll take an image of where it's located. On gallery, so there we go. 
and we'll switch to SED because that will give us more of the geometry in theory. No guarantees in this business. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Now the beam's coming from the left on this, so as things stand, we're probably only going to be able to detect along this edge. It's quite a large piece, so maybe we will move to a different location, like up here, where we can see a chunk of this thing in shot. We can get a better idea of what we are looking at here. So, looks a bit out of focus anyway. Now, is it charging because it's got silicon content in it? Maybe. Um, let's switch that to BSD full. Okay, uh, well, first off, we're going to have to have a look to see if this is element. So we need to switch this over to 15 kilovolts so that we can actually see what the sample is. Of course, this is going to make it want to move around, which is annoying, but that's just how it is. What is this? Could it be a diamond encrustation? I don't know. Carbon? It's not much different to this, but anyway, let's find out. So let's go to, we need a new one, and we're going to call this um, TSG Grid Tied. Blue sample. Okay. And we are going to do some point sampling. Let's take one there. What are we going to see? Well, I'm almost surprised we're seeing iron. It was, after all, taken off our iron. Interestingly, it would appear there's a molly signal in here. And that that is a catalyst, as far as I understand, that that's used for um, hydrogen reforming. So that is interesting. But by far the majority of this is iron and oxygen, or rather carbon, oxygen, but a little bit of iron. <laughs> So, yeah, carbon and oxygen. Hmm. Let's take a bunch of more samples. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. 73% carbon. Is this what one would expect for a piece of soot? Is this a fragment of dendritic soot? I mean, that bit right there, <laughs> it's 100% carbon. <laughs> it's not carbon dioxide, it's not, it's just 100% carbon. There we go. So. <laughs> uh, 100% carbon. So, is it charging because it's graphite-like or what? CNO. CNO. This is the CNO cycle. This is the type of thing we see in the center of vortices. Uh, so, let's just do a map here, why not, of this area. 
Let's try that again. Hey, it's definitely a lump of carbon. <laughs> it's difficult because you've got carbon in the background, so, you know, what can you do? I would have preferred a copper tape sample, but uh, there we go. It is what it is. Now, this looks less like straight carbon. This looks more like iron oxide looking to me. These kind of structures here, definitely iron oxide type structures. I think that's what we're going to find. So let's take a quick image of that. Rather nice little crystals. So uh, let's see what we have in this sample here. What do we have on that? Well, mostly iron and oxygen, but it has carbon bound into it. Iron, oxygen, and carbon. Let's see what the smaller area, the smoother area over here is. Iron, carbon, and oxygen. New surprises there. Oh, hold on. Is that really some molybdenum coming in? Molybdenum. No, iron, carbon, and oxygen, essentially. Um, let's have a look at this area. And why not take a map of this just to get an overview? If that really is manganese and it's not, it's below 1%, but um, it looks like there might be some molybdenum there. What's that peak supposed to be? Silicon. Maybe chrome, I don't know. Um, anyway. Essentially, it's iron, oxygen, carbon, and potentially some of these things you might expect in a specialist steel. So I think what I'm going to do is a quick map of this fleck. I'll take a quick picture here and we'll do a couple of point samples of this particular bit. Uh, yep. Yep. And we'll go like this. So it has embedded carbon in this overall matrix, which is iron and oxygen, essentially. Is that any surprise? Probably not. We can have a specific look at the proportion of carbon in this one. Well, that looks like it's 100% carbon. Oh, <laughs> it's confused. <laughs> Seeing some other lines there, not a lot of lines. Mm. 
nigh on damn it. Now, atomic ninety six per cent carbon. Is this this glassy diamond we see? Okay, I think what we'll do now is we'll do a little map of this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, <clears throat> so that's that carbonate area we were looking at earlier. And we've seen this kind of amorphous carbon before. Okay. And other systems. Mr. Blobby Carbon. Definitely come on. Iron oxide light. Hmm, this is a blending area where two tiles have gone over each other. Didn't quite capture that edge. Oh well. <laughs> Not the end of the world. Now I can switch the autofocus on here and sometimes it produces worse results. <laughs> uh, so I've left it on. Um, it's fixed focus. Okay. Uh, what you're looking at here in the background is the adhesive carbon tape. So this is nothing to do with the sample here. This is the sample which I am imaging. It's like a fleck of rust, <laughs> which it probably mostly is. <laughs> That's that little area we were looking at earlier. Slightly kind of iron oxide type crystals. There's some carbon in there. Now the question is, is am I looking at the underside here or the top side? Maybe 
this is the area that was bound to the inner sphere of the thunderstorm generator. That's not the very most inner sphere, but the inner sphere um, the second sphere is sort of one where the incoming moist ionized plasmoidified uh, potentially material is coming in so we will do a quick map of the other one I think we can safely assume that this is mostly iron oxide Because this is BSD, the lighter is the heavier element or average of heavier elements. So this is almost certainly carbon, given that this is, as we saw earlier, basically 100% carbon up here. So that is our little fleck. Is this a fibre of some sort coming down here? Seems to have moved when it was exposed. It's kind of closing down the imaging here, compiling the multi-layered map. Okay, so uh, should we do this one? Maybe we should do this one. This is the one that kind of moves, unfortunately. Look at that. It's moving because of the intensity that I am using for the beam. This, would, this will make it a bad sample for um, being able to uh, <clears throat> do a map on because it just moves. <laughs> so we'll have a look around for any other particles that might be interesting to look at. Got another one down here. Again, this looks mostly like iron oxide, which is what I suspect most of these are going to be. So if you look in here, Is your kind of iron oxide type crystals. So, for the sake of clarification, I will take an image here. Uh, and this time we'll do a mixed one. It gives us a little bit better idea of the geometry. If I change the contrast here, it might go a bit berserk. All right, okay. And I think I'm going to change the quality of the image. So um, I'll do this just because we can. It being iron oxide, in theory, it doesn't roll around when it's being exposed to this level of beam energy. So you can still get a fairly steady image. Anyway, we'll, we'll do a couple of samples on this. There's a nice flat piece here, but whether it's in illumination by the beam, we don't know. We'll find out in a minute. We'll do a couple of spot samples. So thank you to Malcolm Bendel for allowing me to take this sample. Okay, so we'll go here. We'll take another one. And we will do a bunch of spot samples. Let's see what happens here. Wow, it's got iron in it. There's a surprise not. This one's a bit lighter. Let's see what's going on with that. And we'll have another one over here. And another one in this fluffy area over there. Call it a day. Right, so on the first one, my weight is 75.7% iron and 24.3% oxygen. That is basically iron oxide. 
And here, by atomic concentration, it is 47% iron and 52% oxygen. I mean, that's a high ratio. Uh, it really is just iron and oxygen. <laughs> really is iron and oxygen. I guess if it was synthesizing oxygen and that was coming out, that could oxidize the iron and you're not seeing the carbon there because it's just iron and oxygen. <laughs> Let's see what the other samples say. Okay, so we've got a bit of carbon in this sample up here, this kind of whiter blob. Iron and oxygen predominantly, but with some carbon. This one over here, uh, basically iron, oxygen, very little carbon, nitrogen, and here again, iron and oxygen, more carbon. Um, is that similar? No, it's le uh, it less than that one. But definitely by weight, we're talking story about iron and oxygen. Okay, so that is that little fragment. La, la, la. So, is there any benefit to doing an image of this whole thing? I don't think so. Let's have a look to see if we've got any other bits on our table here. What's that? Don't know, don't know, don't know. There is a particle here. Is this more of the same? I think it probably is. Iron and oxygen, I think. We'll take a map of that with a mix here. <laughs> I've asked the developers of this software to um, <laughs> remove this dialogue showing the progress of the acquiring image from the center, which is always where you want to have it, <laughs> to have an option to have this like down here or up there or whatever. It's frustrating. Uh, to have this right in the center of the thing that you are currently trying to image. Anyway, I guess someone thought it was nice on the development team. Other than that, it's a very, very beautiful tool. Okay, uh, we will go here and just confirm with I suspect we know what we're going to find here. Oh, looky, looky. It is by weight, mostly iron and oxygen. There, a bit of carbon in there. Yeah, one more there, why not? Okay, so I think we know what we're looking at here. Hmm, interestingly, I'll take that back. We've got some aluminium here. Interesting. Um, that is interesting. Why? Um, that is interesting. Okay, what's this? No aluminium there. What about here, near to the previous sample. So the previous sample was there. It's definitely got aluminium. That is a definite peak for aluminium. And of course, aluminium is the third most abundant element in the Earth's crust. And so, um, atomic concentration, weight concentration. Okay, so that is highly significant. Because my theory is that the process will create elements that are preferentially in the Earth's crust. Aluminium is 27 only. Let's try another one here. Well, look at that. Okay. Um, this is interesting. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to look at map resolution here. I'm going to put this to four. Uh, 
and I'm going to put the side of that to five. So it's got a lot of sampling there, close. And we're going to do a sample of this area, a map sample of the area. Am I on the right setting? Yes, I am. So that will have the maximum beaming energy. So we're going to look at this area here. Why not? Is it really seeing aluminium? Yes, it is really seeing aluminium. Nope. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no. Okay, that, that is the... Somewhere there. Mm, seeing the aluminium. Well, it's popping in and out. This is what happens when it gets saturated by one thing. So that line thing there is where the aluminium is, but it's not in the overall area so much so that it is voiding it. So that map, it's kind of, this is where the carbon is, but Highly localized in this area here. Hmm. Well, sometimes it surprises you. Very clearly there, that aluminium peak is not clearly there, there, but it really is clearly, clearly there. Why is there aluminium there? Shouldn't be aluminium there. Aluminium is there. Oh, now the aluminium is coming in. Wow, okay. This is why sometimes you have to do a longer sample. So, very distinctly there in the center of this kind of structure here, which has carbon around the outside and this aluminium here and sulfur as well these are typical elements for ball lightning synthesis so in natural gas one wouldn't expect a lot of sulfur and natural gas doesn't have a lot of aluminium in it so that's a thing Sulfur's not very strong peak, but that is definitely a signal there, I would say. And it's in the center of this kind of structure here. So I think what we'll do, and where's the carbon? Sulfur, where is the sulfur? Sulfur's up the top part of that. The aluminium is specifically located and the carbon is on the outside of that so what we do is we will go here and we will uh, take this down to that but we will put it up to eight samples ten that'll do and then we will look at this 
Yeah, definitely, definitely a thing. There is a structure here which has this aluminium in it. Okay. So I want to do that. Um, and what is that? That is in the center of this area here. Okay, is there anything similar structure-wise? Not really. No. This is our structure here. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the thing to BSD full and ship the energy down here so hopefully we can get a better image of this area. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And we will do we need it on no, that's okay, that's um, okay, we will do no, we want image. Okay, and we will take an image of that. Again, see what I mean? It's right in the center <laughs> where we want to be. <laughs> Oh dear. Now, I would expect there not to be much aluminium in the exhaust of a hydrocarbon engine. That being said, there could be parts of the uh, engine that are made of aluminium. Is this transferal? Maybe. Something to think about. I'm going to switch this over to SED. In theory, this will give us a better idea of the geometry here. Okay. It's the way this looks. This looks like it's built up. There's a definite structure here, whatever that is. So we'll take a shot of that. That's really rather nice, isn't it? Look at that. Very fine structure. Fluffy, one might say. So I'm interested in this structure. What have we got here? And we shall do, oh, hello. What am I looking at here? Have I got a vortex and a counter vortex? Hmm, maybe. What is this area down here? Hmm, is the vortex this way and this way? Curious, curious. Ah. Uh, I think this is going to be quite interesting. Right. Um, I think we're going to take a, a 3D roughness one of this. Scan. Mm. Okay, first order correction. That is our structure. Kind of looks like a hearty type shape. Is it? I don't know. Is this our Ukonovasara at the top here? Don't know. Uh, let's put it in relief view. Mm, very interesting. And this, in theory, is where the aluminium, 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 aluminium is. Let's draw a line across here and see what it looks like. Well, it's definitely going up and down. So there's that point there. Mm. Okay. This could be, maybe, possibly, or possibly not. Okay. So I think we want to have a look at the elements on this side and the elements on the other side. 
definitely overall structure here. Interesting. Okay, so 3D. Mm hmm. Okay. All right, so, not cancel. I need to get it right. This is. Interesting. Interesting. Where is the aluminium coming from? Where is it coming from? Is it coming from somewhere in the engine? That's a concern, maybe. Or is it coming from the synthesis of matter? Who can say? But this definitely has our uh, heart-shaped kind of structure to it. So I need to um, I'm going to put this in as a memory position. These are two useless ones. I'm going to go like that, just in case we find another one. And I am... Okay, so first, I want to take an image of that. And I want to find out what this is, because this is lighter, which normally means it's a heavier element. Hmm. Uh, we've seen a bit of molybdenum in here, and uh, nothing beyond that. But is that is this calcium? Don't know. Could just be a higher concentration of iron, or it's charging. Could be something more focused in the carbon area. Okay, so we're going to go in here. And I have, I want this spot over here. That's kind of where I want to be. Okay. So I'm going to copy of that. And we will change this to 15 kilovolts because we have to. Which will make it maybe a little bit brighter. And we will change this to that. Mm, yep. Once that's sorted its life out, we will focus it, in theory. Definitely something interesting structure-wise there. Um, I don't need to contrast it. That was a bad move. <laughs> um, Definitely, I'm getting this vortex, counter vortex vibe with this. Um, oh dear, that's a little bit bright, isn't it? One more shot at that size. It's rather pretty, isn't it? This structure over here. These dendritic like structures. Dendritic. Okay, let's see what we see from the EDS. This bit here. So, is that on one side? Is it only on this side? I think it might be. We have aluminium only on one side, and then we don't know what that is because we didn't look. It's out of the view. So I think what we'll do is we'll go a new one here. And firstly, we're going to have a look at, what have I got these settings on here? 309. I didn't really want to do that, did I? <laughs> um, where it was. Right, what, oh what, pray tell, is that? Not as interesting as the first look, but is that because it's high in carbon? Well, some carbons. 
very distinct feature. I think we need to fire more beam at it. So, some sulfur creeping in. It's kind of there, but not amazing. <laughs> Can't make up its mind. Well, that's the sulfur line, and that's kind of really there. Uh, this is the, I think, silicon line. And this here is not the osmium. It's probably a secondary aluminium, maybe. Do a point on that. Okay, so we'll have a look at this side of the vortex. Uh, that out. Okay, before I do that, what was it going on here? It was... Have a look at that side of the vortex and see what we see. Okay, so I can see from the oxygen here that this is kind of in shadow. Uh, it isn't in shadow here, um, but maybe there's more aluminium in the centre here, I don't know. Okay, that map's done, so we'll do a map of... That's oh, still working, isn't it? Yes, it's still working. Okay, so um, that's that side. We'll have another one looking at this side of the vortex and see what we see. Well, isn't that interesting? I don't think there's any season there. Eh? 
So this little bit here. Interesting. A little bit of uh, aluminium there. And on this one, if you look at the aluminium and that. Aluminium, so I've got oxygen there. Put oxygen on, okay. Aluminium, carbon, oxygen. Aluminium, carbon, oxygen. Very curious indeed. Well, isn't that a thing? Is this some sort of particular angle? Hmm. 